राध मारा कौन जबिहारी जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमोहम सुप्रीत राजा के चार्य स्त्रोत्र श्रीमाद His divine grace AC Bhakti Vedant Swami Shri Prabhupada ki jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Pranamaham Supri Vraja Kacharya Stotra Sat Si Si Mad His divine grace Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj ki jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki jai Iskand founder of Charya's divine grace Shri Prabhupada ki jai Namacharya Shri Hari Das Thakur ki jai Ram Shaikh Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopinath Shama Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhana Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai Navadweet Mayapur Dam Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Mati Tal Si Maharani Ki Jai Nut Warka Dam Ki Jai Shri Shri Gorni Tai Ki Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Dev Ki Jai Shri Shri Rukmini Dwarka Dish Ki Jai Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the lotus feet of Shri Shri Guru and Shri Goranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1 Chapter 10 entitled Departure of Lord Krishna for Dwarka. This is text number eight. Amantra, Amantra. Chabyanu Jataha, Amantra Chayanu Jata. Parishvad Jabi Vadya Tam Parishvadya Bivadya Tam Aruroha Ratam Kaschit Aruroha Ratam Kaschit Prarish Vakto Pivati Ditaha Prarish Vakto Bivaditaha Amantra Chabya Nugyata Parish Vagya Bivadyatam Aruro Haritam Kaschit Pravish Vakto Bivaditaha Amantra Chaya Nugyata Parish Vadya Bivadyatam Aruro Haratam Kaschid Parish Vakto Bivaditaha Amantra Chadya Nugyata Parish Vadya Bivadyatam Aruro Haratam Kaschit Parish Vakto Bivaditaha Someone else, please?
Amantra Chabi Munyakta Padish Vagyani Bhavitaham Ladies? Amantraya, taking permission, cha, and abhyanu gyata, being permitted, parishvagya, embracing, abhivadya, bowing down at the feet, tam, Unto Maharaj Yudhisthira. Aru Roha ascended. Ratam, the chariot. Kashchit, by someone. Parikshvakta, being embraced. Abhivadita, being offered obeisances. Translation. Afterwards, when the Lord asked permission to depart, and the king gave it, the Lord offered his respects to Maharaj Yudhisthira by bowing down at his feet, and the king embraced him. All, uh, after this, the Lord, being embraced by others and receiving their obeisances, got into his chariot. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Yudhisthira was the elder cousin of Lord Krishna, and therefore, while departing from him, the Lord bowed down at the king's feet. And the king embraced him as a younger brother, although the king knew perfectly well that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. The Lord takes pleasure when some of his devotees accept him as less important in terms of love. No one is greater than or nor equal to the Lord, but he takes pleasure in being treated as younger than his devotees. These are all transcendental pastimes of the Lord. The impersonalist cannot enter into the supernatural roles 
played by the devotee of the Lord. Thereafter, Bhima and Arjuna embraced the Lord because they were of the same age. But Nikula and Sahadev bowed down before the Lord because they were younger than him. Om Ganatam Andasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Umilitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurudevena Maha. So I wanted to go back to the first text and just read through up until the this present text again, just to kind of lump everything together. So starting with text number one, Shonaka Muni asked, after killing his enemies who desired to usurp his rightful inheritance, how did the greatest of all religious men, Maharaj Yudhisthira, assist by his brothers rule his subjects? Surely he could not freely enjoy his kingdom with unrestricted consciousness. Sutta Goswami said, Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the maintainer of the world, became pleased after re-establishing Maharaj Yudhisthira in his own kingdom and after restoring the Kuru dynasty, which had been exhausted by the bamboo fire of anger. Maharaj Yudhisthira, after being enlightened by what was spoken by Bhishmadev, and Lord Sri Krishna, the infallible, engaged himself in matters of perfect knowledge because of his misgivings were eradicated. Thus he ruled over the earth and seas and was followed by his younger brothers. During the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, the cloud showered all the water that people needed and the earth produced all the necessities of man in profusion. Due to its fatty milk bags and cheerful attitude, the cow used to moisten the grazing ground with milk. When I was reading this, this caught my attention. Due to its fatty milk bags and cheerful attitude, cheerful attitude, the cow used to moisten the grazing ground with milk. So, times are different now uh, because the cows are being used for different purposes. And it's very unfortunate and sad that this is going on. And this has a direct effect on Kali Yuga, that this animal slaughter, this cow killing, is a very horrendous uh, activity. And to satisfy the palate, to satisfy the tongue, those who are not spiritual, those who are non-devotees, they're, they're eating meat. And it's, it's very sad. It's, it's very unfortunate. Because this age of Kali Yuga is progressing so rapidly that uh, the people are eating the cow, which is so sacred, which is so dear to Lord Krishna. But back in this time uh, that we're reading from right now, when because of the cheerful attitude, the cows would, would give so much milk in abundance. So just something that caught my attention. The rivers, oceans, hills, mountains, forests, creepers, and active drugs in every season paid their tax quota to the king in profusion. Due to the kings having no enemy, the living beings were not at all, excuse me, due to the kings having no enemy, the living beings were not at any time disturbed by mental agonies, diseases, or excessive heat or cold. Again, notice how the times have changed. Because in this day and age, we see in this Kali Yuga, uh, when we speak about the kings, so we're talking about presidents, they have so many enemies, so many enemies. And 
Therefore, we see that the living beings, they are disturbed by mental agonies. They are disturbed by diseases, excessive heat and cold. Sri Hari, or Lord Sri Krishna, resided at Hastinapur for a few months to pacify his relatives and please his own sister, Subhadra. Afterwards, when the Lord asked permission to depart and the king gave it, the Lord offered his respects to Maharaj Yudhisthira by bowing down at his feet and the king embraced him. After this, the Lord, being embraced by others and receiving their obeisances, got into his chariot. So a couple of things that, that came to mind when I was reading this verse is the amount of respect that is shown by all the different personalities. And we see from reading the different uh, Bhagavatam and from reading Chaitanya Charitamrita and Bhagavad Gita, there's so much respect that's given to all the Vaishnava devotees. Of course, there are those pastimes where there isn't with certain demons, um, they didn't show respect to Lord Krishna. But we see that in this age of Kali Yuga, we can see how things are changing. Uh, how, as we discussed, there's the different regulative principles that are not being followed. Meat eating, gambling, intoxication, illicit sex. And how these particular... Uh, breaking of the regular principles affect certain qualities that one may have. For meat eating, it's, it affects, uh, what is it? Um, mercy. So one cannot show mercifulness if they're, if they're eating meat. Intoxication. Intoxication takes away austerity. One cannot be austere and show us and be austere if they're taking intoxication. Gambling is truthfulness. Truthfulness. And illicit sex is cleanliness. So in order to develop these particular qualities, it's very important to follow these regulative principles. And Cleansing the heart comes from chanting Hare Krishna. And in order to chant Hare Krishna, Lord Chaitanya says, in order to always be chanting Hare Krishna, one must be in a, in a humble state of mind. And he gives that instruction in the uh, Shashastaka. So, one must learn to be tolerant. One must learn to not uh, want any fame, respect, fame, adoration, distinction. That's something that's very prominent in today's Kali Yuga. Fame, adoration, distinction. Everyone is working very, very hard for fame, for adoration, for distinction. Working endlessly, working so hard to make money. I heard somebody say once that you can have, if you have so many millions and millions and millions of dollars, hey, you know, the more money you have, the more things you can get in life. You can, you can have anything you want, anything. But even if that was true, even if that was true, and this, we, we look around and we see that time is taking people away. Even the most famous people the most glamorous people, time is taking, taking away their, their beauty. They take away their, their fame. 
if I were to mention some names of some very prominent people who were very well known when I was younger, let's say in the 60s or the 70s, and if I were to ask some of the younger devotees if they know who these individuals are, they probably wouldn't know who they are. So this fame adoration distinction in the material world, it, it lasts a very, very short period of time. And even we're seeing even those that are the most famous, suddenly, you know, we'll read about them or we'll hear about them that now they've passed away. Even recently, sobering to me, uh, some of people that are very close to me have passed away. And so this is very sobering because I think to myself, you know, this is going to happen to me. So not to scare everyone, not to, you know, get everyone, you know, very uh, concerned, but we should be concerned, not to get anyone nervous, but we should be concerned because it happens to everyone. And we all have to leave at some, some point in time. And so we come before the deities every day and we're chanting and we're, we're absorbed and we're trying to become more absorbed that when that moment comes to remember the beauty of Rukmini Dwarkadish, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Sri Sri Gorni Tai, to be able to envision, to be able to have the in our sight, to be able to hear the mantra. And so in order to chant Hare Krishna, it requires a certain humility. And in order to chant constantly in such a state of mind, as Lord Chaitanya says, being humble, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So everything starts with hearing. As we're, we all know, the ten offenses of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Padasavanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. So, but everything starts with hearing and then chanting and then remembering and then ultimately being able to surrender and give everything up to the Supreme Lord. Because everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Everything. This microphone I'm speaking into, this watch, even this body, this, this was given to me by Krishna. So, everything belongs to Krishna. And the illusion is, is that when one thinks that everything belongs to them. Somebody, last week I was on um, the 405 going north. No, excuse me, it was the I-10 coming this way, coming uh, west. It was the I-10, and all of a sudden... Everybody was hitting their lights. They're, they're, they were stopping. Now, there was, this is during a time when there's typically no traffic. So I'm thinking, okay, there was an accident. Some guy gets out of the car, and he starts yelling at certain individuals. He stopped the traffic on I-10. And he starts pointing at some of the cars. And, you know, I was thinking how somehow someone got in his way, somebody hit him, somebody kept him from, you know, going to where he was going to. And so here he is stopping the traffic <clears throat> to try to act as if he's the supreme controller. And Ultimately, he made a fool of himself because anger makes fools of everyone. And then he got back in his car and he, and he started to drive away. So, we have to see that everything in life happens because Krishna wants that to happen. Krishna's control, Krishna's the ultimate controller, the supreme controller. And we, as devotees, we can understand the concept. We can understand humility. 
in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, nature, the enjoyer, and consciousness. Lord Krishna is speaking with uh, Arjuna. And in this verse, number, well, it's 8 through 12. The very first word in this verse is amanitvam. Amanitvam. And that word means humility. So, so Lord Krishna speaks here saying humility, pridelessness, uh, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity. There's all these different uh, qualities. Uh, which I won't get into all of them, but since we're speaking about humility here, I wanted to just read a little something that Srila Prabhupada wrote in this purport of Bhagavad Gita about humility. Srila Prabhupada says, as for the knowledge outlined here, the items may be analyzed as follows. Humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. Again, humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. Does it happen sometimes where we're honored? Does it happen sometimes when devotees will praise other devotees? Yes. We do this every day with Srila Prabhupada. We're honoring him. We're worshiping him. But just to show his humility... Srila Prabhupada once was with a group of devotees. And one devotee said, Srila Prabhupada, you're an incarnation of God. And Srila Prabhupada said, I'm not an incarnation of God. I'm a servant of God. And then he reconsidered. He says, actually, I'm not a servant of God. I'm trying to be a servant of God. So that was Srila Prabhupada's humility. Because Srila Prabhupada was the, was, was the greatest servant. The material conception of life makes us eager to receive honor from others. But from the point of view of a man in perfect knowledge, one who knows that he is not his body, anything, honor or dishonor, pertaining to this body is useless. People are very anxious to be famous for their religion and consequently sometimes it is found that without understanding the principles of religion, one enters into some group which is not actually following religious principles and then wants to advertise himself as a religious mentor. As for the actual achievement of, in spiritual science, one should have a test to see how far he is progressing. He can judge by these items. So even speaking with some new devotees sometimes, I'll say, um, you know, how do you feel now since you've been chanting for a month, right? How are you feeling now compared to when you first came? So, 
let's all of us think that way. Let's think back to when we joined the temple. Okay, everybody's, everybody's thinking? Okay. Now, fast forward a bit. Fast forward to now, whether it's been a month, whether it's been 45 years. See, think, see the difference, the taste that we have. You start feeling changes within the heart. The process works. We're able to refrain from different activities. Eating meat, I mean, it's like, you know, who has a desire to do that? We can see the heart gets purified. And one day you may come into the temple or you may be somewhere and a situation arises where someone corrects you or someone yells at you or what, whatever it may be. And then you noticed, wow, I actually, I feel I'm responding a little bit differently now than I may have done five years ago or ten years ago. A devotee came up to me last week and corrected me on something. It was an observation and he's a very good friend of mine. And he said something to me. Now, I could feel deep down in here, I wanted to make excuses. And I wanted to say, you know, what are you talking about? You don't really understand everything. You don't understand the whole picture. But I just took it that here's a person that cares about me. And he just wanted to point out something to me that maybe could help me in my own Krishna consciousness. And I felt within my heart that I wasn't responding the way that I may have 10 years ago. I don't know, maybe several months ago. But instead, I was, Prabhu, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking your valuable time to come and say something to me. So... You know, here, respect, humility is very important that we have respect for other devotees. Even if it's someone who's younger than us, we can learn from everyone. And we learn by others' examples. Just look around. We see so many nice examples. We see devotees here that without fail, they are here every single day for the morning program. Or I see a devotee, he's just sitting there and he won't speak during his japa. He just sits and he, he's just chanting and, you know, no one, we, we know not to disturb that devotee, to speak with that devotee. So, on this very special Akadashi day, I thought it would be nice to just focus in on those two words of humility and respect. So perhaps during the day when we're doing our service, walking here and there, maybe go up to someone and, you know, oh Prabhu, can you tell me? Tell me about humility. Can you speak to me about how you see? What is humility? So... Okay, so I wanted to stop there. We have a nice breakfast today and uh, figured I'd give everyone enough time to get ready and get over there. And So um, I want to thank, thank you all very much for your valuable time in coming and listening to Srimad Bhagavatam class. And may you all have a wonderful day in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, maybe you can answer that question or someone else can, because I, I really don't know what Subhadra was, was doing. I can repeat for the... Um, let's see here.
wondering if, it, if anyone knows why she would be there. Okay, first of all, Subhadra is Arjun's wife. Okay, so she's a Kuru now. That's, she's, now she's no longer uh, one of the Dwarka citizens. She's now citizens of the Kurus. She's Arjun's wife. And they had a son called Abhimanyu at one time, which I think many devotees know about that. So that's why she's there, mm. because she belongs there. That's her place. That's it. Jai, thank you for answering your question. <laughs> Jai. All right, Prabhus. Hare Krishna. Have a nice day.